we'll go ahead and get started here. You can, can you all hear me okay? Audio's good? Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here. I know it's a little bit early, um, but my name is Debbie Crystal, and I am teaching um, in the Apparel Merchandising Design and Textiles program. Um, we've got a group of, our, this is our junior designers, and um, at the beginning of the semester, we met with Dr. Noel Schultz, who is the first lady of WSU, and she said, hey, I've noticed there uh, aren't a lot of professional Coug apparel for women. How can we make this a little bit better? Um, so we decided to incorporate that as part of a class project, and the students are here to present their final designs. We've got five teams, um, two to three students per team, and they were each given a specific demographic because there are differences in style preferences based on your age group. So we've got a group devoted to the 30 to 40 year olds, a group for 40 to 50. We've got two groups that looked at the 50 to 60 year old age group and then um, 60 and above. So without further ado, we'll have our first group come up and present. We have Anna and Sonia to present their um, item for the 30 to 40 year olds. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anna Yang. And my name is Sonia Wani. And today we're presenting our market research and development, uh, design development report on professional collegiate apparel. We were charged in des uh, to design and construct a professional collegiate apparel for our demographic, which is 30 to 40s. And we are going to discuss our research process, our design process, our construction, the garment, the styling, as well as our finances. As a as a class, we develop questions to determine what professional women preferred for collegiate apparel, as well as get a sense of what they would, they would wear for business and professional setting, what kind of style and design they prefer. After developing those questions, Dr. Crystal and Dr. Schultz distributed the survey, and over 1,000 responses was, was received. From those responses, 349 women were between the ages of 30 and 40. The design detail and style element that was most favored by our demographic and was influential in our design decisions was 78.27% preferred solid color fabric, 69.50% preferred cotton fabric, and some of the trends that they would like to see in collegiate apparel were body positive, ageless, subtle, smaller logo, color, blouse, shirt, and no polo. The second most preferred fabric weight was lightweight at 21.39%. Oh, the fabrics we used for our demographic, the fabric we used for our garment was white pinpoint, wait, just that. Oh. Sorry. Out of the, <laughs> Out of the variety of styles, most, most preferred was button-down shirt. Common garment worn was dress, slacks, pants, and shirt. 60.34% wanted garments that was both classic but also trending. V-neck v -neck neckline was mostly preferred. So a little bit about our demographic. Uh, so they're kind of the sandwich generation. They're between two generations the late generation X and early millenni millennials. They're born between the 1976 to 1986. They are the first generation to fully utilize the technology era at a young age. And with that, they were able to uh, get more education. And with the education, they were a lot more uh, student debt, which caused them to be a little bit more frugal with their funds in their later use. Um, and they're also about early career, and they postponed marriage and having children. Uh, some shopping patterns for our demographic was that they, on average, spent about $1,960 on clothing, and uh, consumers who were in their early 30s expected good design uh, that was drawn to sharing photos and about what they bought online and what they were inspired from, and they would share that on online uh, social medias. And there was a growing popularity for collegiate apparel, which is generating a market of $4.6 billion annually. Um, 
for the education, more millennials have a college degree than any other generations of young adults. 18% had completed some post-secondary education. College educated women ages 30 to 34 are now as likely to be employed as doctors, dentists, dentists lawyers, and professional professors as traditionally female dominated occupations. Also for income, their pre-tax household income average was $78,385. And we looked at other fashion trends that were kind of trending right now and we used that to incorporate into our design <coughs> and some fabric trends that we used was suede, uh, colors were more neutral, and design was for high-low hem, collar, reverse, which we'll see later on with the V-neck line. For our, our mood board, we called it ethereal. Uh, from our research, we noticed that our demographic like simplicity, they like comfort, and a lot of them liked lightweight fabrics, um, and so we noticed that with uh, our demographic, they're a little bit more, you know, com they enjoy comfortability. So our title was defined by delicate, delicate and light. So that's what went into our mood board. For the fabrics we used for our garment was a pinpoint Oxford Pima cotton, which was ideal for shirts, as well as micro suede for accent on collars and cuffs. For our design process, we see here that we have three styles uh, in different colors, and in, in diff it's kind of hard to see now, but the first one has jeans, the middle one has slacks, and the last one has a pencil skirt. Um, with this, we incorporate our reverse collar. That's something that's not very common in our industry, but it's something that is really um, interesting overall. And we, since our, we are the youngest group, we uh, noticed that they really like classic silhouettes and they wanted something a little bit more trendier. So that's, that was our trendy um, aspect of our garment. For our patterns, we drafted um, our own patterns based on our model's measurements. We drafted about three prototypes and then we made our own final um, pattern and then we digitized our pattern, sorry, digitized our pattern on uh, Electra. So, what did you choose? Ah, what you can see here. We had two feet sessions with our model, and the second feet session, we made a final changes to our garment. We included to raise the armhole because it was a little bit too tight, letting like lengthen the keyhole opening, so it'd be easier to put on the garment. Um, drop the V-neck to make it look more nicer, and. Also, lengthen the sleeve to make it look more classic. For construction, for construction, we for this we made plain seams on the sides, um, serge the edges of our garment, as well as top stitch the neckline and the keyhole opening. We also had design elements of the V-neck, side slits, keyhole, high-low hem on the shirt, as well as French darts to have more shape to the garment. For accents and closure, we added suede on the, on the collar and the stand, as well as the cuff, and also snaps and for, to close, to have closures on the garment and logo on the left side. So this is our final garment that came out for our photo shoot. Um, we have a front, back, and side view. Uh, for our front, you'll see that it's just a regular call, like the back of the collar with the V-neck, and um, the logo is on the back left. So we have our live model here today wearing our garment. So as you can see, there's <laughs> as you can see the reverse collar, and um, on our cuffs we have the suede as well as the base of the fabric is cotton with the V neckline. If I can have you turn, and then with the back you'll see that there's a keyhole on the back, um, and on our logo is on our left side of the collar. Thank you so much, Faith.
for styling, for the first style, we styled it with slacks and a cardigan, um, a high heel, but you can also wear it with like plumps or flats. We accessorized it with red earrings and a cook necklace and bracelet. For the second look, we can, you can wear it with a skirt, with a black cardigan, high heels, accessorized with red earrings, a cook necklace, and a bracelet. The third look, uh, you, can wear, you can wear it for like business casual attires, and you can wear it with like boots and accessorize it with red earrings and a cook necklace. So for our cost, we had a budget of $75, and the whole entire cost of our prototype was $74.94, so we were right close to our budget. <laughs> but, um, you know, we for our manufactured suggested retail price, we uh, came up with $32.99. Even though our prototype was a little bit more pricey, it's just that we decided that since we only used about a quarter of the fabric of, we, of what we originally had, um, and there isn't really too much design, oh, like that much um, is, uh, exaggerated designs. We marketed a little bit lower, um, but yes, this is our budget sheet. As you can see, we ha we bought a lot of samples that cost us a lot of money, as well as um, our pinpoint Oxford cotton was a little bit more pricier than what we expected, but it was it's still good. Overall, what went well with our project was creating the V neckline and the backward collar, as well as the high-low shape of the shirt and facing of the neckline. What we learned was definitely how to fit to a live model. We, neither of one of us had any fit experiences, so learning how to fit and how it forms on an actual body rather than a ma on a mannequin was very interesting. As well as our pattern making process, we originally did three prototypes and we just never came out like fit well on our model. So um, when we <laughs> figured out our last pattern, we uh, found out that it was a skewed. Uh, the pattern uh, was a bit skewed. So that was really interesting um, of what we learned. For the project, we would recommend one change, and it would be for the pinpoint Pima cotton fabric for shirting. The fabric um, tends to be tends to get really wrinkly, and it would like snag a little bit. And we would go with a lighter polyester and with a lining to make it look more flowy, and not have those like snags. Thank you so much for uh, being here for our presentation. Is there any questions? Okay. All right, and then this is our bibliography. All right, thank you. So as part of the um, project, I had the students um, put some, together some styling recommendations. So did I turn? The, yeah, this is still on. Um, so every team will have uh, ways that you can wear each garment. And I thought that was, uh, I, I loved the way that you guys did that. Okay, let's uh, welcome our next group. We've got Jesse and Connor, who um, designed, um, who focused on the demographic 40 to 50. Hi, my name is Jesse Roslin. Connor. Um, and we had the age group of women in the age between 40 and 50 years old uh, and designed a collegiate garment using raw data and all of that. Here, you can go to the next one. Our project outline, we are charged to design and construct a prototype of professional collegiate garment for women ages 40 to 50. We wanted a garment that would be ready to wear for professional women that reflected WSU branding. Um, and we also wanted to give appropriate collegiate apparel that women would be excited and very comfortable and happy to wear in a professional environment. And next we'll talk about our research process. Uh, to summarize our primary research, many of those surveyed worked in education or administration, making sense since the survey was given to Wazoo alumni and staff. 
um, the average height and weight of our uh, model, of our demographic, was 5'7 and 170 respectively, and they were a size large. Um, about half of our demographic bought collegiate apparel annually, and 91% wanted more professional collegiate wear available while willing to spend 51 to 75 on this type of clothing. Uh, as well, many of these women preferred flowy, a flowy blouse or fitted sweater, had problems in areas regarding their stomach, waist, hips, or bust, and the most common brands they shot for were Ann Taylor and MC. Uh, as for our secondary research, we saw that many in their 40s were responsible for spending the most on entertainment than other age groups. Um, women in our demographic were confident shoppers, knew how to pick uh, clothing that fit their body, and were in control of their own spending. Our trend was based on one we found called Slow Futures for spring-summer 2018, with a focus on light and transparent uh, fabrics with a silhouette considering volume in terms of details like a crunched in waist, flowing bell sleeves, and a wide A-line hem. For our design process, we're going to go over design inspiration, color inspiration, and all the construction that went into our garment. Uh, as Connor stated, our design inspiration was derived from WGSN, where we looked up women's wear for spring-summer 2018. We wanted to have a, a minimal, timeless feel to our garment, and we definitely felt that this inspiration showed that. We also found that the fact that 86% of our women preferred small logos, that kind of helped us decide to keep that more minimal aesthetic in our design lines and for our trend analysis. For the color inspiration, we added the pop of Cougar Crimson <laughs> in for our pop of color, and then kept a cool transitional seasonal palette that allowed for us to create a more what a versatile garment that would fit into most people's wardrobe. And here we have some uh, sketch colorways of the garment that we wanted to create. As you can see, we stuck with the color scheme of Washington State University and threw in some neutrals and grays. We ended up deciding upon creating a flowing blouse after going through the raw data as it was one of the top contenders for collegiate apparel. We also saw a consensus that this kind of professional collegiate wear was not available um, and that Wazoo branding was done inappropriately. For example, uh, many women surveyed refused to wear any Wazoo logo across the chest or just even big logos in general. <laughs> All right, so for our fit session, we created our first prototype when we only sewed one sleeve and the body of the garment together. It was more important to our timeline to have these functions finished rather than the entire garment finished as we wanted to focus on fit around the arms, armhole, bust, waist, and hip. The major fish fit issue we ran into was around the armhole and the length. Maria, our model, who's pictured here in the fit session, was gracious and gave us great insight and information on how she approached shopping for tops by stating that she often opted to buy tunics or dresses as tops as to have enough fabric to cover certain areas of the body and allow for tops to be tucked into pants or skirts. I found this to be quite helpful in adjusting the pattern accordingly. As to keep with the fluidity of the original design, we made sure to have plenty of ease around the arms, waist, and hips. Maria was the perfect fit model for our age group as she represented the average size of the women surveyed. For our construction, the order of operations was the most important part of our making our actual final garment. We had to hem the entire garment with a rolled hem as with the fabric was very, very fluid and it had to have a very small hem around. And with the rolled hem technique, we had to leave, it starts about a quarter inch into the seam allowance to actually get it going. So we had to hide that start of it in the seam allowance to make it higher quality. We then proceeded to sew the reverse darts along the shoulder 
and we serged all the edges. We completed the rest of the seams, including the button band, before attaching the collar, and the final finishes were created, were creating buttonholes and attaching hand-sewn glass beads along the collar. For our final garment, as you can see pictured here, the design details that we, we focused on were hand-stitched beads in cougar collegiate colors around the lapel of the collar. Uh, we have a pearlized button along the button band, cascading reverse darts, and an A-line with about, I would say, seven inches of ease around the waist and hips uh, of, uh, along the garment to create that nice fluid feel. <coughs> and these are front and back views uh, of our blouse. Uh, we use Adobe Illustrator to create technical flats uh, of our garment to better depict the techniques we use to create it, as well as specific design details like the hem, uh, pleats, buttons, or beads on the collar. And we also use the program Modaris to digitize or make a digital copy of our paper pattern um, that we used um, to create the garment. And the pattern already had a half an inch seam allowance added, included in the draft. And using Modaris, we can create a graded pattern um, of each piece in order to make the garment in a variety of sizes on a larger manufacturing scale. For the materials, we had to order everything online, which meant getting the correct colors a bit of a challenge. But we were able to make it work for us. The fabric, we were lucky enough to be able to order small swatches before finalizing orders of the three yards. It took a little less than three yards to make, um, but we wanted to ensure that we had enough fabric to complete the garment. We also had to research where what the right size and what the right style of beads would be for around the collar. They had to be small enough, and we decided to go with the glass beads as they had a nice luster and gave it that higher quality aesthetic that we were looking for. And for the buttons, we did test a couple of the buttons uh, along with the fabric. We had two different kinds, and we opted for the pearlized plastic shank buttons um, as we, it reflected the color of our fabric the best. For our budget, we gave ourselves a max budget of $50, um, and we were able to stay under that budget. The most costly aspects of our project were the fabric, even though we opted for the lesser expensive polyester fabric um, than, as opposed to the 100% silk, and the cost of labor, which is what we are anticipating anyways. I was able to self-source from my own stash the buttons, so we were able to stay, save a little bit on that, as well as sharing the burden of shipping costs as we placed our orders with the larger orders of other members of our class group. And now we have our photo shoot Not and style really guide. Um, here's our awesome model, uh, Maria, we have a pleasure <laughs> to work with. She looks lovely in our blouse. Yay. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. These are some close-ups we took uh, to really show off the details, like the beads added to the collar or the pearlized buttons. <laughs> uh, for the photo shoot, we tried to find a place that had good natural lighting, but of course, we were limited with this weather, so. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's see. We also had to do uh, many different poses to show off the, uh, the flowing nature of the blouse and sleeves from different angles. And Maria was spectacular, as you see her today, in our final piece. Um, when coming from the, into the studio with the classroom full of people busily working on their final projects, she was illuminated and many people gave her positive feedback and were just wowed by her. Um, and as well, in our pictures, you can see that she's very comfortable and very happy in the garment, which was really the main focus of creating this piece. And you're all set. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we paired the blouse um, with a few different options, as well as the option that Maria was wearing just now. 
And we wanted to keep our style lines of our styles very flattering universally for most women. So a wide leg pant, a tapered trouser, and an A-line skirt. We paired accessories like cougar collegiate accessories with scarves and necklace and all of that. And additionally, we had a pop of color and a little bit of flash in the shoes and the accessories rather than in the actual garments themselves. We kept it very neutral as most women surveyed preferred neutral colors. And for our reflection, um, starting with the collection of data on our demographic and learning the preferences of our consumers, it was a valuable experience to apply um, what appealed to their needs for collegiate apparel into the creation. And while keeping in mind what we wanted to do with our own trend um, and creative freedom, we were still able to meet our budget and for the materials. With that said, my favorite part about the project was getting to understand, getting to understand what a certain demographic wants and seeing it made from trend to final garment as well as collaborating with my partner, Jesse. <laughs> I really do love the way our final garment came out. And I would have loved to have met with Maria earlier just to pick her brain on design ideas as she is a real life living person <laughs> and has a lot of input in uh, what she finds comfortable in her professional wear. And as a staff member on campus here, that is very important in her environment. Um, I also really love watching the entire project come in and unfold from raw data to trend analysis to design and then the final piece and it was a great learning experience. And because of the variety of work, it was impossible to be bored of it. There were a couple learning curves in regards to patterning the piece completely from just measurements. Um, but all of that experience will just further allow me in my future endeav design endeavors to more succeed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Yeah, I think it would be very successful if it wasn't transparent. We kept it transparent for our trend, trend yep. really, um, and because we were focusing on spring, summer, and that light and airiness to the fabric. But for trans seasonal wear, I think it would be better if it was a sturdier, solid, silk kind of Georgette, um, okay. or at least have a built-in uh, tank into, into the actual garment. Or maybe a lining. Or lining, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> oh, bye, guys. <laughs>Okay, we're moving on to our third group. Um, if anyone wants to take a, a break and get coffee or get water, please feel free to you know, get up and get whatever you need. Um, we will have our next group. We've got Christina and Marianne, who, come on up, um, uh, worked with uh, the 50, um, 50 to 59 demographic. Do you guys hear? Yeah. Okay. Hey there, everyone. I'm Mary Ann. And I'm Christina. Our collection that our product is from is called Modern Harvest. Um, we are design majors, and I'm very excited to talk to you today. <laughs> um, we were assigned to create professional collegiate apparel for women, specifically um, WSU alumni and <coughs> professionals at WSU, and it was all about their lifestyle. So we're keeping into account the fact that they're probably close to WSU or visit it a lot, and uh, we are also focusing on autumn and winter, so we did have to make something uh, for that season. Uh, our outline, we will talk about the research process, 
design process, budget, garment construction, and me and Christina will talk also about our findings and what we learned. <laughs> so to start off, you all took the survey of what, what do women actually want to wear that has to do with professionalism and uh, also representing a collegiate uh, like emblem. And we also looked at secondary sources. Um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, which included like Women's Wear Daily and uh, the forecasting site WS WGSN. I even also looked at some scholarly articles because historically uh, this age group, our 50 to 60s, has been shunned by the fashion industry. That's just a trend that we've, we also found. Um, so out of the 243 women, uh, <laughs> um, 86% wanted professional collegiate apparel or more options at the category of the clothing. So um, we found a lot of the women preferred cotton blends and um, so we like looked through a lot of the research here and we wanted to make sure we wanted to find the right fabric, we wanted to find the right um, like the right piece of clothing that we wanted to make for them so that we got the right item that they wanted to see in the bookie. So um, we went through all of it and saw that they enjoyed shopping at Macy's, at Christopher and Banks, and Old Navy and JCPenney's. They preferred pops of colors instead of neutrals. Most popular collegiate logos placements was chest area. Second popular was um, other, which was um, it said other because um, they clicked um, or was like uh, the wrist area or also down um, on the side area, which was also another popular place. And then 42% most wanted to see a collegiate sweater or cardigan. And um, the majority of the women in our age range are willing to spend $51 to $75 for a more comfortable, well-fitting um, apparel item. And then 61% of women said they like a trendy and classic piece of clothing. And then they also preferred a V-neck um, neckline. Okay. So since our age range includes, like, we all have to remember that, like, the average US women's dress size is a 16. I think as people in fashion, we should know that, like, it's perfectly, like, it's very easy to accommodate whatever size. And um, all of our, our, throughout our survey, it included women of every size. And so we wanted to fo focus also on plus size women. Um, and historically, this is also an underrepresented group. And it's just, it's crazy to me that, like, that's, like, more people need to be accommodated and it's still just being like ignored. Um, so we we're also talking to Dr. Crystal about our, our demographic, specifically that 50 to 60 age, most likely they have, they're married with kids, also have a full-time job, and maybe even taking care of their like aging parents. And we called them like an actual superwoman. And I have like a an immense respect for that and it only makes sense that they want something that's like really easy to care for also comfortable not really really super boring and then also it's not like they look like there's figure flattering and it's like there's something distinct to it so this is our design board and it's called of course modern harvest and it's for autumn and winter and we picked these colors because um, we tried to go kind of with our theme of our school. And we have kind of down in the corner down there is where our swatches that we had picked. And um, we, that little circle there, we picked that because we wanted something that was, um, you know, a natural and relaxed fit because that's what our demographic wanted. 
And, um, you know, we had the Kug logo on there because this is WSU, <laughs> this is what um, our demographic is, and we were also going to have a Kug logo there. And, um, you know, it's going to be autumn, winter, it's going to be a more heavy, heavier weight fabric. And our design process. So um, we went obviously through our data, and from there we were able to, from all the information, we were able to start sketching of what we th thought uh, our demographic would like. And here are some of the pictures of what we sketched. And um, then from there we were able to set up a meeting with our model, and we took her measurements, and then from there we're able to start a pattern based off of her measurements. And then from there we were able to pick a fabric and um, order it so then we could then pick another fabric for our prototype and start sewing that prototype. All right, so for our fabric, um, we use this medium weight knit that actually has like a quilted face and it's a polyester blend, which was actually the second popular in our survey from the WSU Qualtrics amongst our, um, our age group. Uh, although it can stretch a lot, it's still pretty sturdy and um, it's very comfortable. And because it's, it's polyester, it's also very easy to take care of. And that, for our design, it's mostly centered around the fabric because our design is very classic and so it, it's interesting because of the, the texture and it can be both styled, like dressed up or dressed down, like more casually. So this is, these are pictures from our first uh, fit session with our model and it actually went pretty well. We didn't really have to um, adjust too much. What we did have to adjust was after our first session was the sleeve length because um, we did want to have a, a three quarters sleeve length and we reduced the arm width and the curved the neckline. So here's our digitized pattern. With this, I don't know if you guys are all familiar with Lectra and the Modere's programs, but with this you can pretty much take anything and grade it to any size and um, it, it was really interesting learning about it because we took um, our model's exact measurements and made a pattern directly from it. And I think that's like, like there's beauty in that because it's like we don't get to pattern a lot of stuff directly from people's measurements. And this is our digitized pattern of that. And so construction, we just use plain seams with a serge edge finish, cover stitching on the hem and sleeves, as well as the neckline, and we use a embroidered logo on the left sleeve. Also, there's um, some side slits and some little slits on the arm, on the sleeves. So here's our final garment, and we'd like to invite Janine up to show it off. I wrote like a little like like little piece, a medium weight quilted face knit <laughs> v-neck sweater, a perfect essential in your closet for layering and subtly showing off your collegiate style. <laughs> uh, Janine was awesome to work with. Thank you so much. Thank you. So this is our budget, and um, we were actually under budget by $15, and so I think that's a great job on us. Yeah, woo! And um, for our manufactured uh, suggested retail price, we went with $39.95 because um, we found another um, item garment that was uh, very similar to ours, and so that's what we went with. I think something to keep in mind was that the the fabric is like really distinct, and so that cost the most, and we were paying ourselves $4 an hour also. <laughs> and these are like some styling options. Yeah. 
And so for a reflection, um, I think for me, um, I thought I had the hardest time with budget because I always thought I, we were going to go over budget. And so in the end, we were under budget. So I was just mostly happy about it. And um, I always thought I was behind on everything as well. But I just love the experience overall because I learned a lot more things. And um, but yeah, it was a great experience, a lot of learning. I mostly have a problem with time and I think that's for like everything but I just feel like there's so many options that like I really do wish that we could have maybe designed something a little bit more nuanced or like a little bit more professional but I think what we designed solved some problems and also fit our survey like in that they wanted like a v-neck and a three-quarter sleeve and something comfortable and that they could wear like anywhere pretty much. Um, I do think it takes a lot of time to to just make a beautiful thing and hopefully I'll get to work with another model again and do something like this because this was really fun. And thank you. Okay, we're making good time. Um, we've got two more groups. Um, our next group is Leah, Jenny, and Keisha. And yes, we can give them a round. Um, and their group was the, um, they also did the 50 to 60 year old group. And we'll let them take it over. Um, so we are AMDT 492. And uh, I'm Leah. I'm Keisha. I'm Jenny. And this is our project. Perfect. So for our outline, um, like I said, we're AMDT 492, and this is computer applications in design. Um, we had the honor of working with Dr. Schultz, and it was brought to our attention that um, WSU sometimes lacks in developing professional collegiate apparel. Basically, it's more sports, athletic, leisure wear, um, not exactly something you can wear outside of a college student or relaxing in your household. Um, and so we are really excited for the opportunity to create professional apparel that um, women can wear to work, to alumni events, um, any sort of meetings and whatnot. Um, our target market was age 50 to 59. Um, and we're spring summer. So um, from the data that we collected from our survey, 44.03% of our respondents have a bachelor's degree and 14% have a doctorate or a master's. So this is a college educated woman. She makes um, good money, is very comfortable in her um, professional career. And so this is something we wanted that could provide like a very sophisticated, well-respected look in the workplace. Um, and for our agenda, we'll kind of just go over our research process and every step that we took to develop this garment. Um, so initially we gathered um, both primary and secondary data in order to research our target market. For the primary, we extended this survey to um, female WSU alumni or staff members just to get a feel. Um, since these women are in the workforce, we want their firsthand opinion on what is going to work best for them. Um, and so we collected that data and analyzed it. Um, for our secondary, we did a lot of online research in regards to um, the geography of where we are in Washington State, um, weather patterns, as well as um, spending habits. And so th for those articles and data, we focused primarily on our age group. Um, our respondents said that they felt most comfortable in work-appropriate jackets and sweaters. And 61.83% wanted a garment that was both a trendy and a classic look, um, especially for our age range. Um, this is a group of women that wants to dress appropriately for their age, but also have that little bit of a younger look, um, because obviously no one likes to 
feel their age. We want to feel a little younger without trying to act like we're in our 20s or 30s. Um, and 86.72% wanted a relaxed and natural fit. So we really went for a garment that flattered the body um, as well as had that structured look. Um, and then for our research process, we asked those women just what their opinions were, and uh, they were most comfortable in jackets from stores like Calvin Klein or Liz Claiborne. Um, these were just stores that statistically most of these respondents were comfortable shopping at. Um, and these clothes are very directed towards the working woman. Um, it's a very professional look, but also um, can be transferred into a casual like weekend look. And 42% um, of our respondents wanted something similar to a sweater or a cardigan. Um, oh, go for it. Um, so this is our mood page, inspiration page. And we took the inspiration from the survey. Um, most of our target market wanted to have a Chanel style jacket. So that's what we did. And with all the Cougars colors and in the board, there are some ways to style it with the accessories and like dresses, skirts. And some of the things that we decided to base our inspiration off were like Chanel jackets. Um, we just thought they were a really classic, but also kind of trendy piece. We wanted to bring that vibe in while like still not making it too like young, so it's not age appropriate. Um, we also. Uh, brought our inspiration from like bricks and like cafes because they have like a nice classy feel to them too and we wanted to keep um, with the cougar colors too. So for our materials we decided to choose a um, very sturdy tweed suiting that was like 50% rayon and 50% polyester. It was like a medium weight which was perfect for the type of jacket with, that we wanted to construct so it wasn't like super drapey. Uh, we also decided to put trim around the sleeves and like the neckline and down the jacket. Um, so we used a braided gimp trim. And then to close the jacket, we used some hook and eye clasps. And to bring in a little bit more WSU, we decided to put a little metal badge onto the, like, the bottom part of the jacket, and it's going to be engraved with WSU. Um, on this, we have our CAD designs, which is computer-aided designs. And we have our tech flat, which we created through Adobe Illustrator. And for our fashion illustration, we use different kinds of cougars colors to give a variety color choice for our customers. Um, so for the design process, um, we are lucky enough to have the technology that we do here in the AMDT department. And so we had the chance to use um, the Moderis digitizer. Um, when constructing our pattern, we definitely made a lot of adjustments throughout the creative process just to better accommodate our model and um, the target market that we're looking at. And so these are our um, final pattern pieces that we use to construct the final garment. So for the design process, we first started with measuring our model and we took the measurements from that and created our first prototype. Um, after our first prototype was finished, we contacted the model again, and we decided to have a fit session. And these pictures are from our first fit session, and these are like fabric that was just leftover stuff that we could use, so it's not like our actual fabric. Um, and after we decided to make some changes to like the sleeve length and the neckline shape, uh, we decided to pattern our second prototype. Um, some of the adjustments that we had was adding like a two inch width in the back shoulder area and removing like a half inch from the center front on that neckline and adding a few inches to the sleeve because uh, we wanted to go for a three quarter length and it was turning out more like a half sleeve, which we did not want. Oh, oh no pictures. Oh. Well, there's supposed to be some more pictures there, but oh well. Um, <laughs> we created our second prototype and had our other schedule uh, fit session, and we decided that there was just a few more alterations that needed to be made, but overall it looked pretty good compared to the first one that we created. Um, 
after we made those last adjustments, we attached the trims and the closures down the center front, and we scheduled our third fit session with Cheryl. For our construction, we used a, a lot of single folded hem on our neckline, bottom, and sleeves hem, which looks like the picture next to them. And uh, we have a normal size seams for like around the waist. And for stitches, we use a basic stitch for neckline, sleeves hem, and size seams. Lastly, we used a blind stitch for the bottom hem. Um, so for our budget, we were given a set budget of 75. Um, we unfortunately went over our budget simply because we couldn't decide on a fabric, so we spent a lot of money on swatches. Um, clearly in the real industry, this would not have been an issue. Um, and so without that many swatches, we would have had around, uh, or our budget would have been $72.40. Um, and our market retail price would run around $59, um, just because this is a jacket. So um, it is slightly more expensive. The fabric is a little more structured. Um, and it can be worn by itself in spring and summer. You don't need an additional jacket. Um, so this was something we felt the price could be a little bit higher, but not outside of anyone's price range. And um, like I said, in an actual manufacturing situation, this would not have gone over budget simply just because we were indecisive on a fabric. <laughs> So we would like to invite up our model, Cheryl, <laughs> show off our garment. <laughs> These are just some of the pictures that we decided showed <laughs> our model in the most natural way, and she looked really comfortable and happy in these photos. And, <laughs> and Cheryl was a great model because Cheryl does work here at WSU, um, so this is a perfect example of a woman who works in a professional setting. Um, and when we took our photos, we wanted a more natural lighting, but also it works well that she's in a building here at WSU just because this emphasizes like who she is, where she works, and what her lifestyle is like. And it was great to schedule things with her since she was so close to us. She was very flexible in meeting, so that worked out very wonderful for us, mm -hmm. and it was great to work with you. Thank you, Cheryl. You guys were really great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you inspire all. <laughs> Thank you. So we have is it on? Yeah. So we have the three quarter sleeve length and we also put in a little detail. It's a vent on the sleeve. So when our customer um lift their arm, the vent will open a little bit, but when you put them down it will close. And we also have a metal badge on the on one side of the bottom corner that have our university name. And there are five hooks for closure so they can wear it with it closed or open. And for styling, customers can either pair it with a pencil skirt or a work pants, turtleneck sweater, and blouses look great with the jacket also dresses. Kitten heels and lawful flats looks great and wearable for daily working environment for our target market. Con consumer can also pair it with university earrings, necklace, bracelets, and decoration pins. The thing went well in our project is that our model loves it. <laughs> <laughs> And our feeding section went very smoothly and we completed it in our time frame. Um, what we learned is the process of developing a garment completely from scratch. Um, we did gain inspiration from a Chanel jacket. However, um, getting to that point was all us. We sketched it and went through the entire process all the way to final construction. Um, we also learned how to modify patterns and conduct fitting sessions, and we really learned the value of teamwork. This was a huge product project that we spent a lot of time on, um, and having three people in our group, it was a lot easier to kind of divide and conquer, but also work together. And one of the things that we would change next time if we had um, the availability to do so, we would turn the trim into a darker red because um, the trim that we used around the edges is a little bit bright compared to the fabric that we chose with it, but we still thought it went okay. 
Uh, we also would decide to choose a heavier fabric just to make it a little bit stabler and so it could be used in winter a little more, but layering with the jacket that we did create was perfect. And we also think we would order less swatches because <laughs> it wasn't as realistic trying to decide what fabrics we were gonna choose. Some of them were too drapey and it was just hard to know when you can't touch them in person. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Anna. Yeah, we did actually include yeah. those. We did little tiny um, hook and eyes. They aren't really noticeable, which is perfect if you <laughs> wanted to keep it open or if yeah. you wanted to have it closed. Yeah, we considered um, like bigger hooks that were more um, like the embroidered hooks. Um, but since we wanted to add the trim because that's what related more to like a Chanel jacket style, it would have overlapped and might have looked a little odd. Yeah, we did consider that. Um, a lot of the um, data analysis that came back said that people kind of liked the three-quarter sleeves, so we went with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Did you use costume selection dolls? Oh, um, not necessarily. We really just looked at more like the Chanel inspiration. Um, the Chanel jacket did come out um, just before our target market was born and so that was kind of a, a popular style that uh, developed as like they were younger or teenager um, so we just mostly looked at that but we didn't have the opportunity to look at costumes yeah. All right. Great. thank you <laughs>Okay, last but not least, we have got Jessica and Bethany, um, and they focused on um, the market 60 and above. Um, their model couldn't make it, but we've got um, a mannequin that will um, display their garment here. You guys all set? Yeah, okay. Okay, and if you want to use this one, you just Okay, so the title of our presentation is called Age Redefined, and I'm Jessica. And I'm Bethany. And the project that we were focusing on was professional spirit apparel for women aged 60 and above. So for background information, Bethany and I were instructed to design and construct a professional WSU garment for 60 to 70 year old female cougar fans. The goal of this project is to design a professional garment that can be manufactured and sold in the bookie and or crimson and gray that would better suit a wider variety of sizes. A survey was sent out to WSU alum who are female and over the age of 30 to determine consumer interest. From this, designs were made and constructed. So for the outline for this presentation, we will discuss research, target market, materials, design process, construction, styling, budget, and our reflection. So for primary research, first our class developed survey questions that were compiled into a survey that was distributed through WSU platforms and social media. There were over 1,000 women aged 30 plus years old who responded. For the 60 to 70 year old age group, there were only 99 respondents, which is about 10% of the total respondents. The majority of the respondents reported that they were current employees of the university, with their highest degree level being a bachelor's degree. So for our survey results style preferences, 57% of the respondents said that they shop for collegiate gear once a year and of apparel desired for the workplace, they would like to see a sweater or cardigan. Ideal retail price for a professional item would be between $51 and $75. Ideal fiber content was cotton. Of lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight, respondents age 60 plus prefer medium weight garments. Most responded they were comfortable wearing slacks, jackets, and shirts to work. Their favorite fashion trends reported were tailored office apparel, and frequently they mentioned blazers. They preferred a garment with relaxed fit, hitting below the hips, and solids with a pop of color. The age 60 plus group wanted a small, 
or no cougar logo at all. And they liked classic as well as trendy styles. For our secondary research, we did have to conduct a lot of secondary research because we only had 10% of the respondents being age 60 plus. So we started searching on the web to find out more information um, of what our target market would want on women's wear daily, the Huffington Post and WGSN. So um, women age 60 plus are considered baby boomers. Boomers are born between 1946 and 1964. As of 2016, they're ages 52 to 70 years old. Nearly half of all boomers are delaying retirement. Therefore, boomers own 80% of the country's financial assets and are responsible for half the country's spending. According to their shopping habits, nearly 200 million internet users in the US, boomers represent the web's largest constituency. This shows that despite the common misconception of the older generation being able to use new technology, they actually use it more than the younger generations. Customers do not shop by age, but rather by lifestyle. Women of the older generations do not want to wear what's expected of them, but rather wear clothing that fits their personality and shows off who they are. Also, they explore the topic of quality and value. 80% of respondents aged 56 to 70 reported that they would be extremely upset if a pair of pants that were promised to be stain resistant ultimately stained. Old does not equate to frumpy. Young styling teams should broaden understanding on how to make display dressing less youth focused. This tells us that marketing towards this generation is flawed. Designers are designing for an older generation that they have not taken the time to take a look at. The older generation has become more health conscious. This does not mean frumpy clothing may not be the best for this generation. For our design idea, we looked at our target market which is a 60 plus year old female Cougar fan alum who's still in the workforce. She has a fashion sense, knows where and what she likes to shop for. She likes to find deals and is more likely to spend money on garments of higher quality. For our des design specifically, the garment we agreed upon is a semi-tailored jacket with a leather-like material used for accents. Things we wanted our design to incorporate included being trendy, versatile, professional and casual, high quality, youthful, and other than sportswear for branded work apparel. For our design inspiration, after gathering information on our target market, we found common trends between our primary and secondary research that we decided to use as inspiration for a design tailored to them. Being that our target market was a modern 60-year-old working woman, we took inspiration from the city. We were inspired by the structure of the buildings and the look of leather next to matte black. On WGSN while doing research, we found a tech flat for a jacket we both felt could be more casual and comfortable, but look just as tailored and modern for our age group. The materials that we chose to use were a black stretch brushed cotton and Telio Malore faux leather. The black stretch cotton we chose was because it was medium weight, but could still hold structure with a slight crispness could be machine washed and comfortable to the skin. Our target market wanted a cotton and medium weight, so this fabric had the right weight as well as fiber content. The Telio Malore faux, faux leather we chose because it gave a nice accent to the black cotton, adding a bit of luster. Our target market wanted something easy to care for. Since faux leather can be machine washed, it was a good fit. Um. For sketching, we used a tech flat that we liked from WGSN as inspiration, and from there, sketches were made. What we changed from the WGSN tech flat was taking away the collar, pockets, and in the end, we chose to take away the belt. The last thing we changed was taking away the notch and the lapels so that the, at the top of the lapel, there would be a straight angle in order to attach a small cougar placket. After hand sketching was done, the drawings were scanned into the computer, and in Photoshop, colored to simulate different material options. Uh, for design development, we started with model measurements, then manipulated an existing tailored jacket. It was a size eight, um, and we made it in, to custom fit our model. Um, we removed the collar, extended the length um, of the jacket, and added trim details, and brought in the chest. First, we scheduled, uh, for model fitting, first we scheduled to meet with our model via email. After scheduling, we met with our model first to get measurements for the garment. 
We then met up after a prototype was created so that we could do a fitting. During the fitting, we saw that adjustments were needed. This included raising the armhole, extending the length of the jacket, adjusting the sleeve hem, and adding length to the front overlap. We then altered our pattern and constructed our final garment. And on Moderis, um, after we had finished our pattern, um, we digitized it on a digitizing board. Once this was, uh, um, was done, we were able to open it on the computer and add labeling. The pattern includes a half an inch seam allowance, except for on the back piece, the back center piece, um, the center back piece, uh, where it is placed on the fold. Um, the, di the digitizing would be used for mass production. Oh, uh, for details and construction, we surged the seam allowance before we attached anything, and then we added a plain seams with a lock stitch. Um, then we added the facing, top stitch to neckline, edge finished the band. Um, we did the band on the bottom for uh, the finish, and we attached a small wazoo chrome cougar placket on the lapel. Um, for the final garment, um, this is a zoom in of where the lapel detail would be. And um, as you can see, we used um, pleather detailing along the lapel and the band. For the final garment, our model loved the garment, especially how comfortable the fabric was. We styled her with items that she typically wears to work. This includes a long sleeve turtleneck, black slacks, and flats. The second outfit she preferred to wear was a white camisole with black tailored pencil skirt and small black heels. We added a black and red sparkly scarf as, as well as some crimson and gray bla bracelets. This item could have also been paired with other cougar accessories as well as a dress or jeans. For styling, we wanted to choose a casual Friday outfit as well as two more professional outfits that could be worn uh, to work any day of the week. Our target market likes tailored garments, so for the two more professional outfits, we chose to go with a tailored skirt and blouse as well as tailored slacks and a blouse. For a casual Friday, we wanted an outfit that was more trendy, as six-year-olds want to be seen as more modern. We chose flats with kitten heels because those are what our target market wears more often when in a work setting. Uh, accessories were kept to a minimum as we wanted to keep a more polished and tailored look. For our budget, um, the budget for this project was $75. This included shipping and everything. Um, we managed to stay under budget. Um, our total cost was $71.06, so we were $3.94 um, under budget. Um, and our MSRP um, would be around $74.99 because that is what the um, consumer was okay with paying. And um, for our reflection, when creating this garment, we started with a prototype. The prototype was made out of similar material to the cotton, but not to the pleather. Because of this, we had overlooked some aspects of the pleather that may have been avoidable if we had done a prototype with fabric that behaved similarly. Despite this, we worked around newly found issues, making adjustments to our pattern in the fashion fabric. In the fitting, we did the first prototype. Um, it needed little adjustments. This is because we took careful measurements of our model to ensure the best fit the first try. And the adjustment, adjustments that we made after fitting with the prototype included raising the arm pull, extending the front panels out, and finding the proper length for both the hem of the jacket and the sleeves. We learned a great deal with this garment from the stages of design, taking measurements, pattern making, alterations, and budgeting, as well as styling. Our original design had a belt that we had decided to take away because the pleather tended to flare out and not lay flat with a belt tied at the waist. If we were to do this project again, we would have chosen a simpler design for the time available and picked a fabric would have th that would have been easier to manipulate and work with than the pleather. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>
Originally, our design yeah. had a belt, but it didn't work because of the pleather material. Yeah, it like overlapped kind of, and so it looked closed. But then whenever we would tie the belt around her waist, like the bottom pieces would like flare out really weird, and we did not like how it looked at all. And the pleather and so was doing funky things. Yeah, it was just doing funky things. So we decided to not have a closure, but I'm sure we could have added like buttons down yeah. one side. I think the button would probably be the best choice considering that the belt wouldn't work because of the fabric we used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that your market says not a lot of coupons. <coughs> yeah. So that's where your, your small little, but what if we wanted to make it a little more like clear looking so somebody could identify it as texture? Where what would you leave the alternate there for them rather than the structure? We could yeah. add some crimson to the design. Um, yeah, we talked about adding a logo because we, that was the biggest decision was the logo versus something that was more subtle. And we talked about putting a logo maybe on the lapel kind of in the corner next to where we put the just the cougar metal placket or maybe even on the sleeve. Um, probably we were leaning more towards the sleeve if we were doing the logo just because they didn't want it really right out in the front or one at all. So yeah, probably the sleeve. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you all so much for um, coming this morning and um, hearing our students present on their designs and their process. Um, I'm so proud of them. As I was, it was such a pleasure to to watch them go through the whole process, which was a, it was a big undertaking, taking raw data through the entire design process to creating a prototype. Um, and what's really exciting is that um, all of these pictures are put into a survey, and we're sending the survey out to the women that participated in the first one um, to have our community vote on their favorite item. And our ultimate goal is to have that item. Uh, mass produced and sold um, at the bookstore, Crimson and Gray, and our WSU Connection stores so that um, our students can actually be designers while they're in school and have a product of theirs that is available for retail. Um, so we will keep you all posted on that. Um, the survey is going to be open until Friday, and Friday morning we'll close it and then we'll announce the winning team. Um, on Friday. Um, before our models leave, if we could do a group picture with our designs, that would be wonderful. Yeah, no, come on up. I, w I won't say very much, but I, I do want to thank Dr. Ellis and Dr. Crystal for uh, talking to an engineer who knows nothing about fashion and uh, for creating this project to help us. And one of the cool things I think about this project is you all got to have a real world experience while helping um, if you look at outreach and our opportunity for our community, for our alumni and friends who are looking to support the Cougars wherever they are by wearing clothes uh, that support them. So I think this is a great example of how we work together as a university to find projects that are real world so that you run into those problems of a real person and how she, how you have to fit and some of the different uh, activities. The cool thing I think about this is also the age demographics. And as we heard today, I think as a class, you got to learn a little bit about how that makes a difference. And also um, as a plus size person, looking at the plus size and some of those dynamics. So for me, this is as a professor myself, this is a great experience for us. And we try to find these opportunities where not only can you learn something and do real world, but it helps in another area. So I thank you all for, for the information and the buzz you've created around this project. In 10 days, we got 1,000 people. So I think it's very obvious this is a big need. And I hope as you go out, you'll continue to use uh, the information that you learned today. But again, a big thanks to Dr. Crystal for being willing to pull this together this semester, as well as the AMDT department and Dr. Ellis for being supportive. So go kooks, good luck on the rest of your exams and safe travels home. Thank you. Thank you.